When I was in calculus, I had a really good teacher. One day, he gave us a formula on the board, and it was a formula that we used to solve homework questions. And he told us how to use the formula. He gave really good examples, and it all made sense. I thought, wow, this is really cool. What a great formula. At the end of class, he asked us to go home and see if we could generalize the formula to come up with a more powerful formula. I went home that night and I came up with a new version. I sat there at the kitchen table and I generalized the formula that he had given us. So the next day in class, I raised my hand. I said, hey, hey, can you check my work? Is my formula correct? And he came by and said, yep, it's correct. And I, I guess I expected more of like, you know, good work, congratulations, you know, but there wasn't a lot of that. But I learned the formula. Then when I became a teacher, I taught the formula to my students. And I have videos here on the channel of this formula. But this video is not about the formula. It's about how I came up with the formula and how in order to come up with a formula, you have to understand how to actually do the mathematics raw, like from the definitions. You know, what does the definition mean and how can you use the definition to come up with a formula? So let's go ahead and take a look at an actual physical example, like a physical example, and translate that to mathematics. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you the formula in case you want to use the formula in your calculus classes. But let's just jump into the mathematics right now because it's really cool. Okay, so let's start with a physical explanation. And from there, we're going to go to the mathematics. So let's say this is zero and this is one and we're on the number line. So there's a physical distance of one. And there's a person here. And this person is trying to go from here to here. But... This person has a particular ailment. They can only walk halfway each time. So let's say the person makes it here. So they've traveled a distance of one half. But again, this person has this ailment, this disease, where all they can do is walk halfway. So now they walk halfway between one half and one, and they're here. And now, again, they can only walk halfway between three quarters and one, so now they're here at seven eighths, etc. So the question is, does the person ever get there? If the person can continue to walk forever halfway each time, will they ever actually arrive at one? So let's check out these distances. The first distance is one half. The second distance is one fourth. This third distance is one eighth. You can do the math by subtracting and those are the numbers you'll get. So if the person actually gets there, we would basically have what's called an infinite sum. So one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus, and then the three dots here indicate that the sum goes forever. And so if the person could theoretically walk halfway each time forever, right, which we know it's not possible because the person would die, you can't do anything forever. It doesn't make any sense, right? But if you could, it would be equal to one. So in mathematics, we actually say that this is equal to one. So this is a limiting process. There's actually a limit involved. So mathematically, this is actually the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum as k runs from one to n of one over two to the k. And this is actually equal to mathematically by definition the infinite sum as k runs from 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the k. So whenever this is equal to a number, we say that the infinite series converges. That's how it's defined in mathematics. Obviously, in a math book, it won't have this particular example. Instead of this, it would have the symbol a sub k. So it would say something like this infinite series that runs from 1 to infinity of a sub k converges if the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence, which is a sub k, 
as k runs from 1 to n, exists. In other words, it's equal to a number. That's a lot of math there, and I don't want to go too far into the definition of convergence, but that's it. That's the definition of convergence, right? We say that this infinite sum exists, in other words, converges, if it's actually equal to a number. What does it mean to be equal to a number? Well, if this limit exists, in other words, if this infinite sum is equal to a number. Okay, so let's come up with an answer for this without using any formulas, just using this definition. So we basically have to show that this limit is equal to one. To do that, what we can do is we can give this a name. I'm gonna call this S sub n. S sub n, by the way, is called the nth partial sum. So this here has a name. S sub n, it's called the nth partial sum. So let's take this particular example here, and we know that S sub n, in this case, is this here, which is the finite sum, as k runs from 1 to n, of 1 over 2 to the k. So if you were to work this out, this is simply S sub n. Well, what this means is you first plug in the 1, so you get 1 over 2. Then you plug in the 2, so you get 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4, but I'll write it as 2 squared. Then you plug in the 3, which is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8, but I'll write it as 1 over 2 cubed. Plus all the way to the very last one, which is 1 over 2 to the n. So we basically have to take the limit of this and show it's equal to 1. And that would basically justify mathematically that this person who has this ailment, who can only walk halfway, would reach there. In theory, if you could do it infin infinitely many times, if you could walk halfway, infinitely many times he would get there, which again, in the real world, it's not possible to walk, you know, infinitely many times. But that's the idea behind calculus, right? You can do something an infinite number of times. So to come up with an answer for this, the trick is you multiply everything by one half. Watch this. This is where the clever math comes in. Multiplying by one half, you're going to add the exponents here on the twos. So it'll be one over two squared plus one over two cubed plus one over two to the fourth plus 1 over 2 to the n. And then that's the one, because the one before this one is 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. It's not written, but when you multiply it by 1 half, you're going to get that. And then 1 half times this one is going to give you this. So now you subtract this minus this. Then you do this minus this, so you're just, just going to get 1 half. These cancel, these cancel. This one cancels with the one you don't see. This one cancels with this one, and then you have a minus on this one. Going pretty quick here, because I want to show you some more stuff. When you subtract these, this is really 2 over 2 Sn minus 1 over 2 Sn, because 2 over 2 is 1, so you're just going to get 1 half Sn. Another way to think about it is if you have a whole Sn and you subtract half of S sub n, you're just going to get a half. 1 half minus 1 over 2 to the n plus 1. Multiply by 2, 2 times this is 1, 2 times this is going to give you 2 over 2 to the n plus 1. You subtract the exponents, you're just going to get 1 over 2 to the n. Now you take the limit of s sub n, that's the limit of this. 1 over 2 to the n is going to go to 0 because n gets really big, 2 to the n grows really big, it gets really big, so this is 1 over something getting big, so it's going to go to 0, so you get 1. So that justifies it, so it's equal to one. So what does this have to do with the story I told you at the beginning of the video of you know, the teacher giving us a formula? Well, this is actually a special case of something called an infinite geometric series. Let's go back to that formula which I was mentioning at the beginning of the video. So in most math books, this is the formula you see. This is the formula for an infinite geometric series basically says if you have an infinite sum like this, it's equal to a over 1 minus r if the absolute value of r is less than 1. And if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1, it diverges, which means that it's not equal to any number. In our previous example, we had a 1 here, so this formula doesn't apply. So how would you do that problem? Well, you could do it the way we just did it, or you could use a new formula, or you could do like a clever trick and modify this formula. Let me show you the new formula, which I came up with, which you can use. And it's not revolutionary or anything, but it's typically not found in math books. So 
This starts at k, it goes to infinity, and you have ar to the n. And then basically it just says that whatever number is here, you plug it in. So it's going to be ar to the k over 1 minus r. And again, this is if the absolute value of r is less than 1. Notice that this formula agrees with this case. If you plug in 0 here, you get ar to the 0. r to the 0 is 1, so it goes away. So it still agrees. Let's apply it to our example. Our example, I'll, I'll use n. I know before, um, I believe I used k, but let's use n here. So this is going to be n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n. Okay, And in this particular case, you can write it like this if you really wanted to. I'll show you how. It's the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity. Uh, a is just 1, so I won't write it. So then it's just 1 half to the n. Right, because 1 to the n is 1. And you could put the 1 there if you want. There's the 1. You see that? So basically all you do is you take this number and plug it in. And that goes in the numerator. So you get 1 half to the 1, which is 1 half, over 1 minus r. So you end up with 1 half over 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. And you get 1. Super easy. So much better than having to go through that laborious task of you know, deriving all of this. I mean, look at this. This was you know, a lot more work. But you can come up with this formula you know, the same way um, that uh, I just came up with uh, the answer. In fact, let's go ahead and do it really quickly. Uh, why not? I mean, let's just do it. So we have to come up with this formula here, okay? This one here. So I'm going to write it again. Infinite sum as n runs from k to infinity of a r to the n. And so this is actually the limit. Uh, let's let's use m, okay, because I'm running out of variables, of the finite sum as n runs from k to m of a r to the n. And this is going to be our mth partial sum, s sub n. So s sub m, we plug in the k, so we get a r to the k. Then you plug in the next one, which is k plus 1, so a r to the k plus 1, all the way to the very last one, which is ar to the m. Just like before, instead of 1 half, now we're going to multiply by r. So it's r s sub m. Multiplying by r, we just add 1 to all of the exponents. So we get ar to the k plus 1, ar to the k plus 2, and then we get ar to the m plus 1. And then we subtract. Sm minus this is going to be S sub m minus R S sub m. This minus all of this, this is going to hang out. It's not going to cancel. These cancel. This cancels with the one you don't see. This cancels with the one before it. We have a minus on this one. Factor out the S sub m. 1 minus R. And then here we have A R to the K minus a r to the m plus 1, r to the m plus 1, my, my hand stopped working, r to the m plus 1, over, and then divide by 1 minus r, so there we go. So we have s sub m equals a r to the k over 1 minus r, let's break it up, minus a r to the m plus 1, over 1 minus r. Now we take the limit. As m approaches infinity of all of this. So a r to the k over 1 minus r minus a r to the m plus 1 over 1 minus r. We're taking the limit as m approaches infinity, so this doesn't matter. r here is less than 1 in absolute value, so this is going to approach 0. Think of it as like 1 half to the m plus 1. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller the bigger m gets, right? So this is going to be 0 over numbers, so this whole thing is going to be 0. This obviously requires proof, right? You could prove it, but this is just, uh, you know, an explanation, an intuitive explanation, kind of. But this, this type of thing, though, is oftentimes proved, uh, even before you attack a problem like this, you prove that this approaches 0 as a lemma or you, you, something you learn in an analysis class. So this is equal to ar to the k 
over 1 minus r. And so basically that means that we've shown um, that this is equal to um, what we wanted, right? So we've basically proven this to be true, right? So we've come up with the formula. So hopefully um, that made a little bit of sense, but the basic idea is that you start with this physical application, right? It's just so raw. You have this person who can only walk halfway and they're trying to get from zero to one and they walk halfway every time, right? Every time they're walking halfway, right? So first they walk a distance of one half, then a distance of one fourth, then a distance of one eighth, et cetera. And the question is, if they can keep walking halfway forever, will they eventually get there? Well, nobody can walk halfway forever, right? You'll die, it's impossible. But if you could walk halfway forever, then we would say it's equal to one. And then we quantify that mathematically by using infinite series, which is cool. So you have this impossible real life application, something that can't really happen in the real world, to our knowledge, right? Because no one lives forever. You can't do something forever. And then in mathematics, we can explain what happens to that physical phenomena in the case where you can do it forever. So if, if the person could walk forever halfway each time, we can actually explain it using mathematics. And this is a very raw way to do it, right? It's just raw mathematics. Really, really cool. Infinite series are awesome. So here, basically, just to go over it one more time, uh, from here to here, uh, what I did was, is I wrote this as an infinite sum, right? So I took this and wrote it like this, and as a limit, that's, that's the idea. So this, this here is the same as what's here, and these are equivalent, right? These are the same, these are the same thing. And here we define convergence, just generalizing it, and then here we came up with a formula. It's a little bit, it's a lot of mathematics, right? This is something that um, in the past, uh, when I taught pre-calculus, I would teach this sometimes to my students in a pre-calc class when we covered infinite series, but it does take a lot of class time to explain this to pre-calc students. It's tough, right? So yeah, hopefully you learned some mathematics. Oh, also, if you want to learn more mathematics, I do have courses on my website. Let me just do that because I should do it. Math Sorcerer, can't spell, mathsorcerer.com, just spell sorcerer correctly, sorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy website, but if you decide to check them out, please use my website, please use my links, because otherwise Udemy takes like a huge cut. But yeah, and I've set the prices to be as low as possible, so I'm pretty sure that if you click the links on my website, it's always gonna give you like the lowest price. And I'm pretty sure, like, because I set it at like the lowest, for all my courses, so I don't think you have to wait for any sales. I'm pretty sure you can just buy them through the website, and I'm pretty sure it should be pretty cheap. Uh, and I have courses on calculus, um, one, two, and three, multiple calculus courses, uh, some algebra courses, um, differential equations. I have a course on advanced calculus. It's a small course, and a small course on abstract algebra. So also, thank you if you're a Patreon um, supporter. I appreciate your support, and if you're a member, I also appreciate your support. It really helps allow me to continue to make um, content. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you understood some of this stuff, right? Um, really cool, really cool. Raw mathematics. Keep doing math.